many people believe that the tea leaves that manage to get through the strainer and lie in the bottom of your cup tell your future. And what do I have to look forward to? I'm not a professional fortune teller, but I think it's safe to say that the immediate future is very promising. Wish it were. <clears throat> Need change? No, I got plenty of change. Anybody who hates to make a call like you hate to make this call must be calling his dentist. Worse. Uh, long distance operator, please. Brooklyn, New York. Maine, 4706. Hello, Dad. It's me. Hello, Mrs. Rosen. Oh, well, I haven't heard your voice in a while either. I, I, I call when I can. I'll, I'll try and call more often. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Rosen. Yeah, I would call more often if she wasn't on your party line. <sighs> how are you, Dad? Yes, I know how much this long distance cost. I just paid. I, I could write a letter, but instead I'm calling. What's painful about a phone call? Well, don't sit on... What's wrong with your back? Well, did you see Dr. Mitz? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. But you can still go to... Yes, I'll have us alone. You can still go to... You can go to a doctor who's still alive. Well, if, it, if it's not that serious, then don't. Look, I won't keep you long. I, uh... I, uh... I need a... To, to ask a favor. That's not... That's not true. I call, I've called plenty of times when there's been nothing wrong. Well, because I'm not a letter writer. And even if I were, and even if I were, I, this can't wait for the mail. I, I need to borrow money. Yes, of course I still have my union job. I am business rep for three locals. But no, it doesn't pay very much. If it did, I wouldn't be calling. I, I never got fired. I got transferred. So don't say again, I never got fired once. Does it... I got... I got let go from my second job during the polio scare here. There's a big difference. Look. Working for a union does not a rich man make. $200. Look, I'll pay you back as soon... No, I'm not in trouble. When's the last time I ever asked you for money, huh? But never. This is the first time. Yes. Very important. Thank you. 
very much. Caroline's making a sap out of you, Mark. Like she made a sap out of you? Well, little man, you could learn from my mistakes. Now, all she wants is to take advantage of you. Here's some news hot off the wire, Charlie. I want to be taken advantage of. This is not the script we rehearsed. Well, it's essentially the same. I only have one line. Well, I believe you're mistaken. I believe that you have, uh, here, three lines. I have the same line three times. Well, that's what we call writing to your strengths. It's one of the advantages of being part of a troupe, such as we have on the Lemon Tomato Juice Hour. The writers adjust the scripts in order to play to your strengths. There you are. <laughs> Well, if it isn't our rookie apple knocker, Jeff Metcalf. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here, Jeff. Oh, I'll say. Say, how about the weather we've been having lately? It certainly has been cold, and I mean to say cold. Oh, well, I'll say. I don't know about you, Jeff, but I'm looking forward to spring when those Lamo tomato seeds are planted to grow the best tomatoes money can buy. And wait, don't tell me. I know what you're going to say. It's a good thing that Lamo tomato juice is fresh even in winter, because if this cold spell lasts much longer, we'll be marching in the Easter parade right on top of Lake Erie. <laughs> Well, I'll say. I don't know why they leave her up there to sing and not him. It's us housewives, not the men who buy their silly tomato juice. Shush yourself. Does your husband do the grocery shopping? Of course not. Neither does mine. And I don't know about you ladies, but I want to dream about Jeff Metcalf, not her. And I don't know about the rest of you ladies, but I can't dream about my dreamboat. There's another woman holding the oars. Here it is, Jeff. Bungalow 5. You were wonderful on stage tonight. I'll say. The audience loved you. Oh, I'll say. I'm telling the truth, I assure you. Well, I guess I can't blame the writers for what they did until I get over my stage fright. <laughs> you already know my theory on how to get rid of stage fright. As I recall, your theory starts... Uh... Something like this. I halfway expect this motor cord to fall down on top of us. Why would you expect that? Because the first time we were about to ease some tension, the train stopped because of that cow on the track. Mm. And the second time, my brake slipped. And we did a couple hundred dollars damage to two cars. And the third time, your apartment caught on fire. Maybe those were signs saying we shouldn't do this. Maybe, but... 